everyone and welcome to my channel. So today I am going to be drawing and painting this kingfisher for you. It's a little kingfisher that's in my thumbnail. Um, I've just got to pull the photo up on my iPad-y thing so I can um, get to drawing him. Where's my photos gone? Hang on, just bear with me. Sorry guys. Uh, photos. There we go. Now I've got him. Alright, so this little guy is actually sitting I'm going to do him up a bit higher, facing the edge of the page. So I'm going to do his head first and I measure his beak against his head. So I've got him too close to the edge. I've got to rub that back a fraction. I've got to draw him more to this side, this side of the page because his beak will come almost to that side. Oh, I've got to be a bit careful here because otherwise his back also goes out to the side here a lot more. I've got to try and centralise him. This is the fiddly bit. It's trying to figure out where they need to be. It's why I always go with the, I usually go in with a bit of pencil first and then work out where I need him to be. So if I want his beak to end about there. So so his head and his beak pretty much the same length. So head, beak, okay. Hmm, he really maybe needs to be a sideways one. I've got to move him over again. I've got him in the wrong spot again. I need to move him closer. I'm going to do the beak first, which I usually do the head first, but I'm going to do the beak first because that way I can um, gauge the size of his body and he'll fit on the page a bit better. There we go. Because his body does go off to the side here a bit. And I don't want him to disappear. So his head that way is also the length of his head that way. Comes down to about there. And then his body is twice that. So one, two. His body is twice that to the log. So I can just pop that in there. And I've got to have his beak up a bit more because his beak's on a different angle. So this is where I fiddle, I adjust and readjust, I draw, adjust and readjust things where I need them. I will take his beak, his beak goes up into his feathers a little bit and then comes back and down like that. Alright, so, and he's got a white marking on his, oh not a white, a goldish marking on his face. I've got to make his head a bit wider, coming down into there, like that. And he's sort of facing away from us, so he's got a little bearded bit there, comes down there. His, bo his back is to us. So his chest is this way, facing the left, and that comes just about, his chest is even with that line there. So I need to bring his chest out a bit. And then you can see his little legs are in there, his tail and his back go off the back there, and he's sitting on a log. So he's got a leg here. Draw his little leg in. He's got another little leg there. And I got this reference picture off Unsplash, which is a fantastic royalty free reference site. So I get all my, well, a lot of my reference photos for exotic birds like this off Unsplash because you will, you're allowed to use them for your videos and such. And he's got magnificent colours. I did the peacock yesterday. And I was really inspired by the colours. So I'm like, oh, I am going to do another bright coloured bird because I like the bright coloured birds. So he's got his feathers come down here like that. I've got a... So his head and his body is one and a half. So I've got that about the right measurement. Round about the right measurement. I've got to put the highlight on his eye, which I will leave the white of the paper. He's got beautiful little bright orange feet, so that'll be fun. So I'll be using a mixture of cool watercolours 
and my Sennelliers and Schminkies. So I'm using three different watercolours today for this one. And I'll pop a core around the back there. And he's just sitting on a little, little stem, little branch of the bush. Okay, and his tail disappears off the back of the branch. So I'll draw a stem coming down here like that. Just like that. And around over the back. Whoops, and I broke the lid on my pencil. That's alright. So his feathers on his wings. And I love drawing. So the fun part for me, the really super fun part, is getting the drawing down how I want it. And I'll try and get the wings in the right spot. So he's got his wings come off the back there, like that. And then he's got, you can just see his back feathers coming down there like that. And the rest of him's golden. His little bum bum comes around there. His tail goes down the back and you can't see the bottom of it because it's behind the branch. I should do the branch a little bit thicker, maybe. Like that. Pop his little claws on. Like that. He's got a third toe here. He's got a little toe there. So I'll just pop that on. Just like he's got on that one. So he's got three toes on the front and one at the back. Mm. So I'll just shorten that one up a fraction more. Oh no, that's right. That's all right. There we go. Okay, so now let's have another look at these feather details up here. So I'm actually going to draw in quite a lot of his detail because I want to actually no I'm not I'm going to do it with um I'll do the drawing the color with the watercolor so he's got that patch there he's got a patch coming down here like that he's got an orange a golden patch there that comes in like that it comes up there a bit more I can tidy up some of these lines in a minute that's just darker He's got a blue patch, that patch comes down there. That's all right. He's got his feathery bit here. Tidy that up. There we go, I can get rid of that line because I, I moved his head about three times to get it where I wanted it. But his golden chest, he's got a gorgeous golden chest. So I can take away that inner line now. Like that, there we go. He is pretty much how I want him. So I'm gonna get him with color because I can. So first of all, first and foremost, I'm just going to take that, his beak comes back past the end of his mouth a little bit there. Okay, I'm happy with that. So now let's get my watercolours happening. So I pre-wet my paint so that I'd be ready to go. Where did I put my brushes? Um, I had them here, I got a bit of cloth. And I'm going to go straight in to his beak. I'll start, well actually I'll start with his eye. And I'm going to go transparent sienna. Or I'll go burnt sienna natural, which is a which is a core colour. It's a really lovely for a golden brown. So I'll bring my palette over a bit closer. So I'm going to go core golden brown for the very first part colour on his beak. On his eye I mean, oh my god, it's not his beak, it's his eye. <laughs> Oh goodness gracious, I'm having a moment. There we go. All my words are I'm not wording very well. And I can leave that I'm gonna leave the white of the paper, the white of the eye. So I'll just darken that up. I'm just gonna shut the door. There we go. And I'm then gonna make up a grey for his beak. So I'm going to use Burnt Umber, Burnt Umber and Cobalt Blue. Cobalt Blue makes a great grey, a light grey. Oops, that's just not enough Burnt Umber there. There we go, a bit more Burnt Umber, a bit more Burnt Umber. There we go, and that's a lovely grey, a natural grey, which is what I want. And that I'm going to take in a very thin wash, a watered down wash, onto his beak 
and I'll drag that out. I want it to be quite pale to begin with. And from this angle that I'm looking, I can see the sheen on the paper. I've just got to move the lights a fraction. They're a bit glary for me. There we go. And I, while that's still damp, I'll drop in some darker grey, so less water, more pigment. But it's exactly the same colour as that initial wash. Just much more water, much less watered down. Right. I can take that up the top of his beak and I can come back and tidy all of that up after. <coughs> He's also got that grey colour coming away from the beak but around towards his eye like that. Okay. And then actually I've got to take I've got to darken up this bit just here. Like that. Okay. Happy with that? Because all of the, the vibrance is going to be on his feathers, his gold and his blues. So that'll be a lot of fun. So I'm going to go into his eye now. I'm going to make a darker. I'm going to use burnt... Oh, that's not it. Hang on. Burnt umber. Let's clean that up. A bit of burnt umber. And a bit of indigo this time. A bit of indigo with my burnt umber. And that'll make a darker grey. So burnt umber and indigo, and you can see that's made a really dark grey. And I'm going to use that on his poop pupil, except I need a little bit less water and a little bit more um, indigo. And I'm going to go around very gently that light white eye part where the highlight is. And pop his iris and pupil. Probably make that a bit smaller like that. There we go. So that's popped his little eye in. And I can actually go around that outside edge now and strengthen that darker edge because he does have a darker edge around his eye. I'm going to do that in little dots around the top. And I can start to build up the darker tones. He's much darker on the bottom of his beak, so I can strengthen that line. I'll just wet my brush a little bit. And you can see that blue, that indigo blue works great as a dark. It is a fantastic dark. It really does lift things. And just things don't look as flat. If you use black, it looks flat. So I much prefer to use indigos and blues for my darks. I think it just creates an over, over, overall a more pleasing picture. Okay. So I'm happy with that. Now, I'm going to get on to the golds. So, I am having a look at the colours that I've got. He's very golden brown. So I'm going to use my gold ochre. So I'll just wipe out this ready brown that I've got up the top. And I'll pop my gold ochre up here. Because I think gold ochre is a natural golden brown. And I think that works better. So we'll go a natural golden brown. Like that. And I'm going to wet the paper first. I'm going to wet his whole belly. So I've cleaned my brush, dipped it in the water, and I'm just going to wet the paper and drag that right around his belly. Anywhere that's going to be gold, I put that gold ochre and I put the water. So anywhere that's going to be gold, like that. And that comes down the back and down under his belly. And I'm using my um, silver black velvet brush, and this is a size 4. Love the silver black velvet. So now I've done that, I'm going to drop this gold ochre in and let it flow. So anywhere that's got this gold colour, this golden brown, I'm going to put it and let it flow around. I've got to get a bit more of that pigment on my brush. And on my palette, there we go. And there's all different golden bits coming around there. It comes around here. Alright, it 
looks green on my camera don't know why that is it is take my word that it's golden <laughs> but my camera's showing it up as green it could be the lights but it is a golden color don't know why that is but that's okay so I get a bit more of that onto here Take that around there, and I've got to do some shadow tones. I'm going to leave that a little bit modelled, so it's got a little bit of a little little bit of um, hit and miss, a little bit of lights and darks, different strengths of it here and there. Come down and around here. I'll add so now I'm just going to add the same colour, more pigment, less water. Because if once your paper's wet, if you put it if you put it left more water, it'll just feather out and go all over the place. So if you every layer, if it's still wet underneath, as long as you add thicker paint, it won't go crazy. <laughs> Less water and more paint, it won't go everywhere. But you've got a bit more control of it. So working wet into wet can be tricky. But yeah, as long as your your top layer is a little bit thicker than the consistency underneath, a little bit milkier, less watery it will it won't go crazy on your paper you'll have far more control and it'll look nicer there we go okay I don't mind that I don't mind that like that I quite like that and now he's actually got I'm not going to do wet in wet up here but he does have that same gold around his eye so I'll pop that in and I'm gonna I'll add some finer detail over the top at the end with a rigger brush to add some feather detail towards the end. But for right now, I'm just getting the base layers in. So I'm quite happy with that. And I'm working on Archer's Hot Press. So it's smooth paper. Now for the fun colour. So I'm going to clean up that orange. So I'm just doing this so you can see the colours that I'm using. So I'm going in with cerulean blue and this is my core colour. So core paint reacts differently to other paint, but I love it. The vibrancy of core is just nuts. It is absolutely awesome. So now I'm going to start with the beautiful turquoise or cerulean feather detail. Because these guys, I just adore the colours that are on them. They are magnificent birds. Absolutely magnificent. And I'm just going to carefully leaving, because they've got little ribby, little ribby gaps in the patterns. And they've got a dark, a, like a blue-grey, and then this beautiful cerulean as the colour of their feathers. And I'm taking that, just following the direction of the feathers too, that's one of the things that's quite critical, is follow the direction of the feathers. That is actually quite critical. If you end up doing your patterns going the wrong way, even if it's the right colour, it can still look wrong. So if you're doing a furry animal, you've got to follow the fur direction. If you're doing a feathery animal, you've got to follow the feather direction. So it's one of the biggest things I learnt, because when I used to colour in stuff when I was young, I just colour it in any direction and just fill in the gaps and it doesn't work, it doesn't look right. So you have to absolutely follow the direction of the feathers or fur of whatever animal you're drawing or painting. Even in big washes like that you do your strokes in the direction and it really does help. It makes it from good to great. Hello Anjali! How are you? My pleasure, doll. My absolute pleasure. Just stuff that I've learned over the years and I found I, I sort of fumbled my way across it and did it wrong and then figured out how to do it right. <laughs> so I did it wrong many times and wondered what on earth it looked wrong for and then figured it out. So just years of experience. <laughs> And uh, doing it wrong and then getting it right and going, oh, that's what I was doing. So just, again, coming down here is making it a bit stronger, a bit more solid, less line work there. Got to be a bit careful because he does have a greyish patch there. All right. But any layer, as long as you're working from light to dark, 
I can go over this with darker tones. Whoops, see how that's got too much that's got too much water. So I just take the moisture out of my brush and pick that up. I'm going to get some more of that beautiful cerulean on my palette like that. And I'm going to go back over that bit less water this time because I made the mistake of picking up too much water on my brush. And I'm going to take that I'm just having a quick look. So his, his feathers come down and around. So I'm going to start to change the direction of the feathers now. Um, so these little gaps. This colour is gorgeous. So this is, yeah, my core colours and the vibrancy of their watercolours is just phenomenal. I think they're becoming my favourite for vibrant work. I didn't use them yesterday. I should have used them yesterday. Um, on the peacock. I might have to do another peacock <laughs> so I can use these colours on the peacock because these don't dry back very pale. They stay strong which is what I want. Um, yeah they hold their their tone and their value which is really handy. And I only got these, this the Sennelli's and Schmickies I've worked with for years, probably 10 years now. But the, the, the cores I've only had for 12 months. And they do react differently on paper. But that's fine. They When you wet, wet, wet into wet, they spread differently. It's, the only, it's not a flaw, it's just different. And I, you know, I like them more for their vibrancy. Um, you get different qualities with different brands, different types of reactions. But I, I tend to not use them wet into wet. I tend to like to use the cores more like this as de detail but that's personal preference I think for flowers core would be great wet in wet so come down here and having said that I haven't really I've got to try and get I'll do the bottoms of his wings. I've got to get some more of that. And I'm going to use a little bit. I've got a bit of cobalt, tur cobalt turquoise that I'm going to add as well. So I'm just going to get these little fine feathery bits coming around here. Because he's got these little fine feathery bits doing that. I've got to leave that pale part. Come around here. His wing feathers are very fine at the front and they do just sort of spray back onto him. I'm going to try and I'm just going to get a damp brush and I'm not doing it wet into wet. I'm going to do this one layer, a fine layer of that cerulean, the coarse cerulean. I'm going to take it down and let it dry just to get the base of that wing on, just to get that very gently and then same down the back of his tail because that gold's dry now. Take that down and I'll build up the feather detail on the top. Okay I'm going to go a little bit at the turquoise. I'm going to get the turquoise onto my palette. I should clean out that grey. Hang on. Let's just clean out that grey. So just so you can see it easier on my palette and get the turquoise. The turquoise is gorgeous. Look at that. Look at that for a colour. So I'm going to add that turquoise on also. Onto this green, onto this blue I mean. And I'll also add some grey towards the end, or I may not. I may decide not to, but I might. So I'm just going to do the same thing. Taking that turquoise behind that blue leaving tiny little gaps while I'm letting the back dry. So you can jump around, you can work on, like when you've done one part and you need it to dry, you just bounce to the other part of the body. You just go to another another side. Like I did the wing, I did the chest, so I worked on the head. Then when I've done the head, I worked on the body. Now I'm letting the body dry, I go back to the head. So you sort of rotate around. While one part's drying, you can move to another part. And that helps keep it, keep it so you can keep working. You don't have to stop all the time and and walk away. You can. I like to stay on a piece. Once I start something, I like to finish it. So if I start a piece, I very rarely will walk away. 
takes me an hour, two, three, five, I'll just stay on it. Um, just because I, I get distracted and if I get distracted I might not have the same mood when I come back. So I try and stay on a piece once I start it because then I, create, I finish it with the same kind of feeling as I start with because I find I am very emotion driven when it comes to art. I've got to be excited about it. I can't draw for the sake of drawing. I've got to draw what I want to draw. So um, I find it important to stay on a piece for me because I can change moods and not feel it anymore. And I don't like doing that. <laughs> so I will try always to stay on it. There we go. So that back's dry now. I can touch it. It's dry. And I'm going to pop. He's got beautiful dots on his feathers. Beautiful turquoise dots. So I'm just going to pop those on. And I'll add some more feather detail towards the end. I'm going to go back to my turquoise. My, uh, sorry, my teal. No, what is it? Cerulean. Cerulean. Go back to my cerulean. I totally had a blank. And I'm going to go over the top of this now in feather strokes. Again following the directions of the feathers. Like that. Oops. I'm just doing long sweeps in the directions of the feathers. And this is just my th my technique. I mean Everyone finds their own way of doing things and over the years of practice I've found ways that I like that work for me. Okay, I'm happy with that. And that's the thing, you've got to sort of find, you, you use sort of the recommended techniques and then you make them your own. You figure out what works for you as an artist because you know I've got friends who We'll do one part and then walk away and then do another part and walk away and do another part and walk away and spend days and days and days and days and days on a piece. I can't do that. My brain doesn't work that way. <laughs> but um, yeah, you find what works for you and you do it and you adapt to everything. So this is almost, this is cerulean blue, but it's pure, very, very little water. And I'm just using that pure cerulean to strengthen the darker area, the stronger coloured areas. Not darker, just stronger pigment, stronger colour. So it's exactly the same, just less water, so it looks more vibrant. Take that around, like that. And it comes around the back of his beak. Down here, again, following the directions of the feathers. Always following the directions of the feathers, like that. There we go. And I'm going to take that around the bottom part, anywhere that's sort of shadowy. And I can also add, because this is blue, you can I can use any kind of blues for the shadows. Like I can use a purple for the shadows. I don't know what colours I've got. I've got a I've got a beautiful in oh my gosh. Core has the most magnificent indigo, so I'll be using that because I can't help myself. I need to use the core indigo because it is a magnificent colour. Probably my favourite indigo of all the brands. And I love it because indigo is my go-to everything colour. And I'm definitely going to be using indigo for this. Definitely. Uh, especially the core indigo because it's magnificent. Truly magnificent colour. So I'm just going to divide di dis divide these feathers on the wings a little bit. Just to define them. And he's got these little feathers that come all the way around here. Like that. And he's got darker feathers at the back. Stronger, not darker, stronger coloured feathers at the back, like that. So pop those on. I've still got to add the greys, so I'm going to have to make a grey. So I'll get my, whoops, that is a blue grey, that one. I might use that. It might be a bit strong though. Yeah, that might be a bit strong. I'm going to make another burnt umber, burnt umber. At that you can't really see that on the bottom I've got it here I'll lift that up so you can see it burnt umber I try to make my own greys burnt umber and I will use cobalt blue because I want it to be a paler grey I won't use indigo I'll use cobalt and I'll water that down a lot 
a lot lot because now in amongst these feathers he's got that grey so I'm just going to dot that in very 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 gently very finely because it's a blue grey it works with all the blue that's on this little bird I've got to darken up around that eye too I haven't got that anywhere near dark enough so I'm just going to take all of that around into some of that grey area let's have a look he's got a little bit of it on his back here a little bit of grey there like that a little bit he's got grey under here take that down there carefully and a little bit of grey down under there okay and he's got quite a bit of grey on these feathers so between the blues I'm going to pop this burnt umber cobalt blue mix of grey just like that he's got a bit of grey on his back I can come back into that with my um, fine line brush in a minute. I'm just going to get some more grey around his head now because he does have this blue grey coming right around. And this will fade back. It, it'll be very, very subtle because it does fade back. The Sennelias and the Schminkies do a little bit. They've got a little bit of the colour shift. There we go. And I'm going to strengthen up. I'll re go back over those blues. Oh, I smudged. I'm going to clean my brush. You can see where I put my hand in it because I had the palette too close to my hand. So all you do is just get a clean brush and wet it and then dab. And you can lift off any smudges you have. It's not the end of the world if you have an accident like that because I've got my palette too close to my hand so you guys can see it on camera. And another trick is have you, if you're right handed or left handed, have your palette on the side that you are handed so if you're right-handed I have my palette on the right side because if I had it on the left side I'd be dragging my brush across my painting and you've got more chance of dropping and having an accident and dropping your paint onto your painting so always try and work with it on the side of your body that you are handed so if you're left-handed paint from left have your palette on your left if you're right-handed have it on your right okay so I'm gonna leave that alone now that'll let that dry and that'll dry really like almost invisible you'll barely notice it okay I'm gonna move that away a little bit because it's getting in my way okay so back to my cerulean so almost pure cerulean and I'm just gonna to start to I'll go just darker towards the eye oops so it's just more pigment less water towards the base of the feathers going down behind his eye and this would be a fun one in acrylics too because he can get very vibrant acrylics it could be a lot of fun to do with acrylic and I've been doing a little bit more of acrylics lately okay having a quick look at me big screen I've got to do more here he's got lovely light blue if I can get that turquoise actually and I can go if it's any bits that need brightening and I've gone too dark already I can go in with a bit of gouache I don't mind doing that I can add gouache over the top because I do have gouache I love gouache so I can and will probably do that just to add some lights back if I've lost them if I've gone too dark too fast you can always use gouache or acrylic as long as it's a water medium it's not not a problem it won't look too far different okay so he's got his feathers under here are a soft golden brown color okay so I'm gonna let the back of that dry for a little bit I've got to go around his eye and I've got to darken up that gold around his eye. So I'm going to go transparent sienna. And I've got to strengthen up this gold tone around his eye. And I love transparent sienna. It's a great um, 
iris color. There we go. Take that and just strengthen that that oh, around that eye, like that. A bit more, maybe a little bit more. There we go. And I might even I'm going to grab my indigo. I'll sit that. You can see how dark that indigo is. So I'll just pop that there. How dark that is right there. And I'm going to use just indigo. It's a great replacement for your darkest darks. But it's just a very dark blue. Hello, David. Thank you. How are you, mate? How are you going? Welcome, welcome to my live stream. It is lovely to have you here. So, yeah, we're just painting a little kingfisher because they are absolutely gorgeous little birds. One of my faves. And I've got to darken up. I've got to be a bit careful though. I'm going to darken up this top part. He's got a real shadowy bit here that comes around the top of his eye. And this will really help his eye, the detail on his eye to pop. So I'll come back and around here. It's still a little bit damp, but I don't mind. I don't mind if the indigo blends in with the other blue a little. Well, there we go. Look at that. It's starting to come together. So I get this little bit of indigo coming around here into that darker area that I wanted, like that. And he's got a little bit of that darker indigo on the front. And I'm starting to get into the building up of detail now, which is fun. So I'm starting to mark in all the bits that are going to make a difference and make him stand out. I've got to get the very tip what I like about these um, silver black velvet brushes is they hold their edges beautifully. So I can use the brush, the flat side of it, to spread paint out. But I can also use the teeny tiny tip for like rigger work. I've got a rigger and I was going to use it, but I don't need to because I can use the, the actual brush itself, the, the silver brush it is. Silver black velvet. Size, what is it? Size 4. Okay, come back down to there a little bit. All right, so I'm going to also use this indigo now. I'm going to start to get this. The, in, the core colours flow like crazy. They have this super duper duper flow about them. If you're not careful, they can take off on you. <laughs> And you can lose control of them really easily. So, um, yeah, cores take a little bit of getting used to, but they are magnificent for colour and saturation. Absolutely magnificent. Like, there's just, oh, you can't do better than this colour. This, this, oh, you just can't do better. It's gorgeous. Absolutely phenomenal colour. All right. Okay, so that's a bit better. And I can also take that where I've put that grey. Instead of grey, I'll do this blue. So that grey you can see is faded right back to pale. So I'll use the indigo. Like that. Comes right down the bottom. Tips of his feathers are blue. So I'll just rough those up a little bit like that. Happy with that? Right. And I'm also going to use this indigo instead of the grey. Get a bit more water on my brush and I'm going to pop that in intermittently, not, not one solid line. I'm just going to use the very tip of my brush and dot that around. I've got a bit too much water in there but that's okay, it'll dry. A little bit too much water in there. I want the contrast. Whoops. I want the contrast, so take that around. Okay, take that around the back here, like that. Fill that in. All right, happy with that. Get a bit more of that on my palette.
I'll leave little gaps, little gaps, just so it's not one solid mass. And I can add little fine sort of threads of that blue coming down there, like that, because he does have the darker sort of threads of feathers going down there. I'm going to let that dry now. I'm going to leave it alone for a minute. Leave it alone for a minute, and I might even just come down here and pop some of that blue, just the little twisted of feathery bits that are going in there because the gold overlaps them, but we needed it in there, and a little bit down here, and a little bit there. Just a little bit of strengthening. There we go. All right. I'm going to clean my brush very thoroughly. I'm going to go to an orange. He's got vibrant, vibrant orange feet. So I'm going to go a pure orange. I've got a uh, Sennelia orange. And it's a, an amazing orange. So I'm literally going to go straight in with that. And I'm just going to take that down his feet because his feet are vibrant. So I come down there like that, down there like that, leaving a little gap between. And I'll have to make a darker orange for the shadow, but that's fine because he's got amazing vibrant orange feet. Pop that in there, go around here, go down to this one down here and then over the back like that and I'm going to leave that alone and just let it sit for a minute and I'll do his claws on in a minute and I'm going to get onto his chest detail again I need another golden brown so I am having a quick look at my colors that I have and I'm thinking I might go the gold ochre Again, let's go gold ochre, but less pigment, less water, more pigment, make it stronger, and just start to build. And this is sort of a semi opaque watercolour, this colour. It seems to be more covering, it does tend to cover more of the under, under layers, so I can um, build it up a bit stronger. It has a bit more guts to it. So I'm just going to pop this, not all over, but just in areas that need feathery detail, a bit stronger feathery detail. Just And that's sort of dry brushing almost, just in the directions of the feathers on his chest. And it comes down here. I've got to get some more, because I do, when you work dry brush, like dry, lot not very wet paint on dry paper you know you've got the minimal amount of water in it to make it travel um, it does use a fair bit more paint so again following the direction I turned one feather the, the wrong way there I can strengthen that under there like that okay looking better He's got shadow under there, but I'll use darker orange goldy colour first before I go. I've got to get some more in there. That's a bit bare looking there. All right. I'm just going to soften that edge a little bit. So I just wet my brush and drag that around a fraction. So that's just gold. That is all gold ochre. Not yellow ochre, gold ochre. It's a bit brownier, which is... Um, just better for what I'm doing. And I'm just going to take some brush strokes down his chest, in his chest direction, dry brushing, dry, sort of very little water on my brush onto dry paper. Having a quick look at the big screen so I can see the proportions and how everything's coming along. Because his feathers are a bit muffled up. Right, let's have a look. Now I'm going to work on the branch for a little bit. So I'm going to literally, this is where I'll use yellow ochre. 
So I clean my brush thoroughly. I pretty much use one brush for the whole painting. And I'm going to wet the stick, the bird, the bird sitting on. I'm just going to wet that. I'll cut around that orange because that still might be... Oh no, it's dry. So once it's dry, you can go over it. And it sh Oh no, you can't. Okay. It's, um, I'll stay away from that orange a little bit. It's not quite dry. It re-wet really easily. And I'm going to get my yellow ochre. Get some yellow ochre. And I'm just going to drop that into the log and let it flow. Drop that in like that. Let it flow around. It's all good. It looks green. I don't know why my, it's, it's showing green on my camera. It's not. It's yellow. And I'm going to add some burnt umber to the bottom because the bottom's in shadow. And I'm going to let that flow wet into wet up on to, into the wood. I can also add a little bit of marks up into there also for the grain as I want. Just like that. I can pop some more detail at the end. But for now, I'm just going to wet into wet. Drag it around. Blend it a little bit here and there. You can come in a bit closer to those. Take it a bit closer to his feet. Stay away a little bit. There we go. There we go. And I will add a purpley tone under, directly under him when it's drier, a bit drier. It's got to tidy up this edge. It's a bit ruggedy looking. There we go. There we go. I've got to add a shadow underneath him. And shadows, I nearly always use a purple. So I'm going to go a bit of me blue and I'm going to add a bit of indigo, a bit of red and a bit of pyrrole red. We'll see what happens. A bit of blue, a bit of pyrrole. Let's, add, let's do that. See what happens, what sort of purple shadow colour we come up with. Oh yeah, it's alright, that'll work. That'll work, because I'll also add that to his belly. So I'll add that shadow colour while that's still damp directly under him. So anywhere that's going to be in shadow like that. And I can also take that while it's still a little bit damp and just to add a bit of texture into the other parts of the stick. Like that. Add a bit, you know, make it look a bit more woody, a bit more branchy. Don't want it solid hard lines at all. I'll just come around his toes very carefully. Like that. There we go. Like that. Alright, I'm happy with that. I might just round off that bit there a bit more. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to leave it. And I'm just going to add some pure indigo on top, on the very top. And that'll go almost black. But it's not, it's not black, but it's almost. Just on that very darkest bit directly underneath him. Like that. Okay. Now I've got to add, I've got to find, I might even, I've got to find a brownie tone for the gold part on him. So I might even try a little bit of quinacridone. No, that's a bit yellowy. I don't really want to use quinacridone. What am I going to use? I've got to make a shadow. I'm trying to figure out to, what I'm going to use to make a shadow for under here. I need a brown, a golden brown, but a darker golden brown than I've got. And I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. So I can't go about burnt umber because that's just too dark. Maybe I'll try Burnt Sienna Natural. That might be just that. So I'll go Burnt Sienna and a teeny touch of blue. Teeny touch of blue. Yeah, that makes a that makes a an earthier brown that could be a bit darker. Because he does need a little bit of difference in his darkest areas because they're the bits that are in complete shadow. Like that. So it's just practicing and fiddling around and figuring what works and sort of problem solving a little bit. Trying to work out 
how and what you can use for shadow colours. I usually try and stick to the same colour palette um, that I've used. So I've used an orangey brown, a golden brown, so I try and stick with the golden brown, but just a darker version of the same thing. So I'll take that down and around here. And I'm still very much sort of playing with ideas and sometimes it'll work and sometimes it won't and that's just how the mop flops. So I'm having a quick look, that's okay. I'm quite happy with that and I might just darken up here a little bit. Dry brushing, so dry paint, like very, very little water, enough water to move the paint and that's it. And dry paper, so it leaves more of a natural kind of a stroke. Less wishy-washy looking, less wet looking, less looks more like a, an individual line, like a pen line, than it does a brush, uh, a wash. All right, it's coming together, coming together. And he's an amazingly bright bird, so it's fun to try and do something like that. Got to bring that shadow around his leg. I might even use a blue. I might go a bit of a... I can go a bit of dioxazine purple. Let's see what that is. Let's have a look at the dioxazine. I haven't used that. That would be a great, that is also a lovely dark. Dioxazine purple makes it an equally as beautiful a blue, a shadow, sorry, as indigo blue. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous colour. Gorgeous colour. I'm just going to take that into that part. So that's dioxazine. And I've got to just fuzzy up those feathery bits under his beak like that. And I'm going to use that dioxazine on his pupil. Just like that around the top of his pupil. So his eye is actually purple. There's no black on this bird. It's just purples and blues and greys and greys made with blues, blues and browns. So now I'm going to go back onto his feet and I'm going to go a little bit of pyrrole orange. It's a dark, it's a brownier orange because I'm going to use that on the underside of his little toesies. Oops, there we go get my brush to a point. If it doesn't want to do it, that's fine. I might even go a Conacridone Gold Deep. Let's go, let's have a look. Conacridone Gold Deep is a darker orangey colour, darker orangey gold. And I'm going to use that on the bottoms, on the shadow parts of his toes, just so it's a couple of tones darker like that, take that down and around, I've got to draw his claws as well, there we go, and I can also bring that into, I quite like that, I bring that into his face, and up here a little bit, it gives it a little bit more of a, a golden hue, I like that actually, so I can add that in as well, see I'm still, I'm trying different things and sometimes different things you know you see it and you go oh that might work and then you add it and it does so don't ever be afraid to try something because worst thing happens you have to do it again and it's not the end of the world because <laughs> you learn every time you make a mistake you learn something and next time you know oh that was a happy accident I'll do that again so see it start that gave him a bit of a lift that has definitely given him a bit more of a lift so I definitely like that. Definitely glad that I did that. All right. Okay. Come back around the back of him. Pop that shadow in there. In the direction of the feathers. I was going to use my rigger, but I don't need to because this brush has a lovely fine tip. Darken up there. There we go. So he's looking pretty cool. 
I'm going to add, I'm going to get a bit of my gouache. Where's my gouache? Where's my gouache? Lost my gouache, lost my gouache. Lost my gouache, lost my gouache, lost my gouache. I've got to find my gouache. There's my gouache. Okay, got it. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna add a little bit of white. And I've got white gouache here. I love my gouache. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of light back. And this is Sennelia gouache. It's a beautiful gouache. I just need to get a little bit, little bit of white back where I've lost it. Just a fraction. I've made it a bit too heavy and dark looking. So I need to just lift it a little bit. And I can pop his highlight on his eyes fine. I'm happy with that. I've got to add, I'm going to add, make a turquoise. So blue, bit of white, bit of green, bit of white, bit of blue, and a bit of green just to make a turquoisey colour because that's not going to work. Um, I want to, there we go, I want to add a bit more of a stronger, i add a little bit of white to that, it'll make it a bit pastel -y, but there we go, I need it to be just a little bit more of a turquoisey colour, light blue onto the dotty bits of his feathers. Oops, that went the wrong way. I need it to go down, not up. There we go. And I might even add a little bit more white to that. So let's not, I'm going to add a little bit of turquoise. There we go. Let's have a look. Happy with that? Add a little bit of white, just very fine little touches of white. He looks a bit heavy on the back there. And he needs a bit more white here because the light's sort of hitting him there. So I'll add a little bit of white there. And I have my gouache palette already set up. It's because I do love to use my gouache also. And we're going to take this, fill in that bit there. All right. And he's got a little bit of white on his chest, just a little bit, just a little bit in that highlighty bit. So I can use the gouache to create a feathery look like that. have a look. He's looking pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to add a little bit of light to his toes just to light it a little bit of white just to, oops, I need to get pure white on my brush on the very tip. Just going to dot in a couple little highlighty bits. He's got white on his beak a little bit, little highlights here, so I can use a bit of gouache for those highlights that I'd lost. Get a bit in there. And I can actually also, interestingly, you can use, like I, I'm not afraid of going in with a bit of pen as well if I want to, I can go in with a bit of pen just to vibrant things up a bit. I've got to make, somehow, I'm just having a quick look at my big screen. He has got the palest light blue. I'm gonna grab my rigger, my very fine, teeniest, tiniest brush, which is, you can bear it like it's such a fine tip. I'm gonna grab that, and I'm gonna use that with the white, just so I don't get blobs I want to add white, just a little, because the top of his head is super bright. And I'm just fiddling, I'm just seeing what works. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. You've got to make mistakes to figure out what's what works sometimes. 
And I'm just going to add a few little strokes just to make that look a little bit less flat. Hello, Slee Stack. How are you going, doll? How are you? How are you? Take a few of these strokes around here. I'm just looking at him thinking, okay, I've got to do his claws. He hasn't got claws yet. So I'm going to go into my grey that I've already got on my palette, which is a purpley blue. It's actually in Dance Throne. And I'm going to pop his little claws in with in Dance Throne, just like that. So pop those in like that. He's got little turned down claws, having a quick look. And I'm just going to darken up to get some of that indigo also. Just down there like that. Okay. Hello. <laughs> How are you, Dal? So now I'm going to come around the eye. Get that indigo. Indigo is my go-to love it colour for all things. Indigo is just magnificent. I'm going to feather up around that eye a little bit more. Like that. Okay, I'm just thinking, I'm thinking he's looking pretty good. I've got to try and clean that up, but I'm not sure that I've damaged the paper. I'm going to get a very clean brush. Go back to my watercolour brushes, grab a super duper 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 clean one and see if I can clean up that little mark. Because I really don't think I need to do a background. I'm just going to leave him like that. So I'm just going to wet that again. Get my clean brush, a clean cloth, and just dob it up. Blot it up. See if I can make that look a little bit less messy. That'll dry hopefully a bit better. And I'm pretty happy with that. Like, I think that's turned out pretty good. So I might just leave him there. I'm just having a quick look, another quick look. And I'm pretty happy. Pretty happy. I can't see much. Well, I could do a background, but I don't think I need to. If I do a background, it'd have to be a green. Like a foresty green. And I really don't know. Um... Maybe I could, maybe I will. Let's do it. Let's just go for it. Why not? So I'm just going to go, I'm going to go like a very strong green. So I'm going a, what is it? What would that be? That is olive. I'm going olive, but very diluted olive. Very diluted olive. And I'm going to wash that all around, being careful to stay away from the, like go almost to the edge, almost to his feathers because the core colour colour does re-wet quite well and I don't want to re-wet it and have it blow out onto the paper. So I'm going to pick up that bead there, go back to my green, very, very diluted green. I want the background to be super pale. Okay, while that's still damp, keep it moving. Because this is hot pressed paper, you do end, you can end up with hard lines, you've got to be careful. And because it's a, a warm day here, the paper dries fast. Like this, it does dry almost as it hits the paper. So I take that in and around, like that. Start getting very close to, but not quite touching the bird. I wasn't going to do a background, but I didn't like that bit where I had the smudge. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to cover it, so I'll do a background. But I'll do a very subtle, pale background. Staying again, staying away from the edge of the bird, just a fraction, like a millimetre, just so that I don't smudge the paint. Do that. There we go. It actually looks pretty good. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Stay away from that edge. Just get right in close. Hello, Grey. How are you, mate? So hello, producing great works. Thank you. I'm having lots and lots of fun. <laughs> Lots and lots of fun. What are you up to, mate? And how have you been? Whoops, it is. Okay. Got to fill that in. Got to be quick. Got to be quick before the paper dries. And I've got to go under there a little bit too, because you can see just under his little bum bum. There we go. And I will probably, I will end up with little, little sort of um, dry lines, but you can't avoid it really this hot press paper, smooth paper, 
really does act differently to, to grained paper. Okay, that's it. I reckon that's it. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not going to fiddle with it because if I fiddle with it, that's when you mess it up. So I've stayed away from the bird of fraction because the core colours do tend to re-wet really easily. So I'm just going to leave that and I'm going to wait till that bit down here dries and then I'll sign it. But I am actually going to call that done. So let's take off the edge very, very carefully. Very, very carefully. Very carefully because I do have a tendency... I usually stick my sticky tape to something else first and that way it takes the, the, the harshness. Sometimes you can pull off your paint, your paper, your sticky, and it'll tear your paper or just fluff it up and make it look rough and yucky. So if you pull it off slow and on an angle, away from your painting, very slowly like that, it leaves you with a lovely clean edge. A lovely clean edge. And... I'll leave the bottom one so it stays where it's supposed to. Whoops, like that. Whoop. Ow. Got my sticky stuck to my fingy. And come up. And just lift that. And I'll use the other tape to lift it too. And lift that up and away. So you always sort of pull it away from your painting. And there we have it. There we have it, peeps. So that's almost dry. That's dry enough to sign. So I'll get another bit of cloth, dry me brush. I'll go in with just my green. And I will sign that just below his perchy bit here, like that. So that's the same green that I used to paint him. Whoops, but, but pure pigment, not no water in it. Like that, and put the year, 22. I've actually got one of my grand uncle's paintings, and it was done in 1912. And I always look at the date, and I'm like, oh, I love seeing the date, so I should put 2022. There we go. So there we go. So thank you for hanging out, everyone. Anjali, David, Sleestack, Gray, Anthony. Thank you so much, guys and gals, for popping in and hanging out for a little bit here and there. Um, yeah, I will be back probably tomorrow. I'll see what how the mop flops, and I've got. I can look. I'm looking out my window, and I can see I've got a little black puppy that's sunbaking, little Jack Russell pup, and she's a black one, and she's just laying out in the lawn, like a little solar panel, getting some sun. <laughs> So anyway, I better call her in so she doesn't get cooked because she's a little silly muffin. And I will see you all for my next stream, hopefully tomorrow. Um, but yes, have an awesome weekend and I will see you when I'm looking at you. And if not, I will catch you in your videos or on Instagram.